In my previous video, I generated a, well, kinda respectable approximation of a sine wave using the PWM output of a microcontroller, specifically an Arduino Nano, and a third order RC low pass filter. Yeah, card link. And at the end of that video, I hinted there are better ways to get analog signals from microcontrollers. And that would be digital analog converters. As it happens, I have two brand new digital analog converters here. And that would be a microchip MCP4822 and an MCP4922. In this video, I want to cover the basics. That is, how do you connect these digital to analog converters to the Arduino? Yeah, what additional hardware do you need around them? And what libraries you can use to control them? And finally, yeah, <laughs> if everything works out, generate some sine waves again that hopefully look a little bit better than this. In a second video, I want to delve a little bit deeper, uh, with especially the MCP4822 and the MCP4922, and see how you can max out these things. So, enjoy. Before we start playing around with the MCP4822 and 4922, let's have a look at the whole family of digital analog converters from Microchip. And it is a big family consisting of 12 different products. So you get resolutions between 8, 10 and 12 bits, you get single channel and dual channel converters, and you get converters with internal and external reference. And the interesting thing is, yeah, that's the reason there are 12 different types available. You can get each and every combination. So you can really uh, choose a chip really tailored for your application. And because these chips are all very similar, yeah, as soon as you know how to use yeah, one chip with internal <laughs> voltage reference and one with external voltage reference, yeah, and I will <clears throat> use these two as example, you can basically or you know basically how to use any other chip from this family. That's a really neat feature. But now let's start with, uh, let's say, the MCP4822. And yeah, here's a little picture of the package. And you see the package is the same for all chips having dual channel independent of the resolution. Let's have a closer look on the MCP4822, which will go onto my breadboard first. And the internals are the same for the 4812 or 4802. We have an SPI interface, unidirectional, so there's only a slave data in, no slave data out. And that interface loads two registers, one for each stack. You have a second row of registers which are loaded from these SPI controlled registers, but only if that pin LDAC, load DAC is low. If that pin is high, you can do on the SPI interface, load whatever values, values you want into these registers. The registers actually controlling the DACs won't change and therefore your output voltages won't change. The output of the DAC goes into two output amps and you have here the option to change the gain of these output amps between 1 and 2. Considering that your voltage reference for the DACs is 2.048 volts, yeah, a gain of 1 will yield you maximum output voltages of 2.048 volts and a gain of two output voltages of 4.0 something volts. Okay, you also have the option to switch off the outputs completely. Yeah, these little switches here. 
And of course, the gain logic and the output logic is also controlled by the SPI interface. Short remark, the MCP48011 and 21 are also identical inside, only that the B string of DAC functionality is missing. They only have one string here and one analog output voltage. That's the only difference really. Some highlights from the data sheet. So your input voltage or your supply voltage has to be between 2.7 and 5.5 volts. So 5 volt operation, no problem. 3.3 operation, no problem. But note, you cannot get, yeah, in gain two mode, a voltage of four volt out of these things if you operate them at 3.3 volts. The swing of the output amplifiers is actually between 0.01 volts and yeah, your supply voltage minus 0.04 volts. So yeah, almost rail to rail, but uh, please keep in mind, you cannot get the outputs down to really zero volts. You have at least 10 millivolts at the output also. The maximum clock frequency of the SPI interface is 20 megahertz. I don't think we can max that out with a 60 megahertz Arduino. Recommended decoupling capacitors. Well, your usual 0.1 microfarad or 100 nanofarad ceramic, but also an additional 10 microfarad tantalum, not electrolytic. Keep in mind, one half of that chip is working as an analog circuit. And as soon as you get into analog circuits, all this power decoupling and ground loop stuff and such, yeah, you need to take it seriously. We've got now enough from the datasheet to build a little circuit on the breadboard to get that thing up and running. So the SPI interface of the MCP4822 will be controlled by an Arduino. So we connect the Arduino master out slave in and serial clock pin to the S clock serial clock pin and slave data in pin. And the digital pin 10 will act as our slave select. Power comes also from the Arduino air ground five volt rail and the 5 volt rail to the VDD pin of the MCP4822 will be decoupled as recommended by a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor plus a 10 microfarad also ceramic capacitor. I don't have tantalums. Ceramic is better anyway. Um, the load DAC, LDAC pin will be controlled by the Arduino Digital 9. But in the context of this video, I guess we leave that simply at low. So basically everything we load via the SPI interface into that thing will be directly translated into analog voltages here coming out at V out A and V out B. And these two outputs will be connected to the oscilloscope. So let's see what we can get out of that thing. And what we can get out of it are two really nifty looking sine waves. Yeah, phase shift 180 degrees and we will have a look at the code in a minute. But yeah, just appreciate it for a second. I mean, uh, 62.19 Hertz sine wave, absolutely stable. It doesn't get any better, does it? Well, <clears throat> maximum value 2.069 volts and minimum value <laughs> minus 18.75 millivolts. But hey, that's an oscilloscope, not a voltmeter. And if we zoom in really, really deep, you can see, yeah, digital noise because <laughs> it comes from a digital to analog converter and not from an analog oscillator. But I'm down here to 200 microseconds per division on the time scale and to 100 millivolts per division here on the vertical scale. So yeah, it looks very nice. Uh, 
we will improve on that in the second part of the video. But uh, yeah, for a start, wow. There's really not much on the breadboard. My Arduino Nano, my MCP4822, yeah, with the two decoupling capacitors here at the VDD pin, yeah, as close as possible as I can put them on a breadboard. I have this load deck line here connected to D9. I have my slave select, the orange one connected to D10. I have my master out slave in data line and I have my serial clock line. And yeah, of course my oscilloscope probes and yeah, their connections to ground. That's it. So let's go real quick over the code here. So I'm using the MCP48XX DAC library from Steve and I won't even try to pronounce that name because I will definitely butcher it. And that supports the MCP4822, 12 and 02. And the code itself, there is not much to it. Yeah, I'm using that library and that library will include spi.h because yeah, we're using the spi interface. I'm defining my two pins here, which I'm using the chip select pin for my MCP4822 and the load deck pin. And I'm using an unsigned in int array uh, to store pre-calculated uh, sign values for a full sine wave from 0 to 360 degrees in yeah 512 steps. Yeah I initialize my object MCP4822 yeah and the only argument here is a chip select pin you have to take care of that load deck pin yourself. And in the setup, I calculate the sign values here. And yeah, it's basically the same last uh, as in the last video where I uh, use the PWM output. You can refer to that video if you want to know details. I set the pin mode for my load deck pin to output and I write low to it and uh, I will leave it at low at least in the context of that video more maybe in the second part. Now on to the MCP48XX library or my object here MCP4822 you have to initialize it. You can, of course, set the gain yeah, for both channels. Remember, gain 1 or gain 2. You can turn on or off the channels. Of course, here I'm turning them on. And you can set the voltage. So, yeah, digital value between 0 and, yeah, to the, to the power of 12 minus 1, 4095. Uh, anything else? Yeah, then you do an update DAC. Please note that this library only communicates with the DAC when you execute that command. That here is you can do all your settings and then when you execute update DAC information is actually sent via SPI to the DAC. There's not much happening in the loop. Uh, I have an uh, yeah, I variable which I use to go in a for loop through my 512 pre-calculated steps. And I set voltage A to yeah, step I and voltage B to steps minus one minus i so I come from uh, the other end of the arrow array with my values and then I update my deck and I do that forever. That's it. So just for funsies let's go up here to my setup and change the gain to hi. I will upload that now and then we have a look at the oscilloscope. 
With gain two, my output voltage is of course twice as high. And my oscilloscope says 4.135 volts, yeah, maximum, which is about -ish twice the 2.048 volts of the built-in voltage reference of that DAC. Let's move on to the MCP4922. Like the MCP4822, it has 12-bit resolutions, two channels, but it needs external voltage references. And like the 4822, it belongs to a group of two, three chips that cover resolutions of 8, 10 and 12 bits and all have exactly the same pin layout. The internals are very similar to the 4822. You have your SPI interface, yeah, loading these two registers here and you have your second row of registers controlling the DAX and you have that LDAC pin controlling the data transfer from the SPI controlled registers to these. You also have the output amps with the gain logic times one times two and the output switch, so no problem. In addition, you have a shutdown pin, okay, where you can put the whole thing into a power safe mode. What's missing is the voltage references and you have to supply the reference voltage for the DAX externally. And there are input buffers which can be bypassed for these VREF A and VREF B inputs. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And of course, all these switches here, gain, uh, bypass the buffer output, are also controlled by the interface logic. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention for the MCP4901, 4911 and 4921, there is simply that whole channel B stuff missing from the chip. and. I think they also come uh, in a smaller package with less pins. Operating voltage is exactly the same, 2.7 to 5.5 volts. The datasheet for the 4922 contains an extra section here for the input amplifiers for your VREF inputs. And in buffered mode using those input buffers, your supplied reference voltage can be in the range between 0.04 volts and VDD minus 0.04 volts. If you bypass the input buffers, your reference voltages can range between zero volts, which makes no sense, to full VDD. Also note the input impedance if using unbuffered mode is only 165 kilo ohms. Interestingly, they don't give you a value for the input impedance in buffered mode. They just write later on, it's very high. Output swing is like for the 4822 and any other DAC in that family between 0.01 and VDD minus 0.04 volts. So supplying a reference voltage at exactly VDD really doesn't make sense. Maximum SPI clock frequency is, yeah, for all the decks in the family, 20 megahertz. And like the other MCP49 and MCP48 decks, it wants two decoupling capacitors on its power supply. A 0.1 microfarad ceramic and a 10 microfarad tantalum. Uh, I will use a ceramic again, of course. With these pieces of information from the datasheet, we can build up a basic breadboard circuit with our MCP4922. And I will leave the MCP4822 on the breadboard too, because, well, I'll need it in the second video in this series. Anyway, SPI interface like for the 4822, so Arduino, master out, slave in, and serial clock, go to the MCP4922. 
This time I'm using the D8 pin of the Arduino as the chip select. 5 volt of the Arduino supply voltage VDD goes to our chip here and yeah again the coupling capacitors 0.1 microfarad and 10 microfarad both ceramic. The shutdown pin will be also pulled high to 5 volt from the Arduino so yeah it's not shut down and the load deck pin will be connected this time to the D7 pin of the Arduino. Anything else? Yeah, as for the 4822 V out A and V out B will go to the oscilloscope. And yeah, the new pins V ref A and V ref B, I will connect them to the 3.3 volt rail of the Arduino. Yeah, that's not really a reference voltage but uh, yeah it's good enough and this video is about that chip and not about voltage references. So let's have a look at the oscilloscope. No surprises here we have two sine waves again. I didn't change the code really I'm just using now another library that can drive that 4922. We'll have a look at the code in a second. Please note the maximum voltage of 3.6 something volts here. Yeah, we're not using a voltage reference. We're using the 3.3 volt rail from the Arduino and that's obviously not as precise as a voltage reference. Also note our frequency is now 70 hertz. So yeah, that library has less overhead than the one for the 4822. But we will talk about performance in the second video. Noise-wise, this signal is not quite as nice as from the 4822 with the built-in voltage reference. Again, here our scales are 100 millivolts per division and 100 microseconds. Yeah, 3.3 hmm. volt power rail as voltage reference. That's all I can say. The breadboard is getting crowded so I'm daisy chaining my white serial clock and green master out slave in from the SPI bus to the 4922 uh, the 4922 has its own chip select here. Yeah, I think that was digital 8 and digital 7 is the load deck pin. I also bound the shutdown or not shutdown pin to the 5 volt rail and talking about the 5 volt rail we have our decoupling capacitors here again 0.1 micro and 10 micro. And yeah, oscilloscope probes to the outputs and I'm stealing here the 3.3 volt rail from the Arduino to supply both reference input pins. Let's have a look at the code. Let's go over the code real quick. So I'm using the Arduino MCP492X library for Mich D. Uh, yeah, and I got it from GitHub. It's not directly available in the Arduino environment, so you have to download the zip file and manually include it in the Arduino library manager. So what are the changes in the code? I'm including that MCP492X library here, and yeah, there will be a link down in the description. I'm Defining two more pins, my chip select pin number 8 for the 4922 and my load deck pin number 7. Uh, the rest here, yeah, constant how many steps my sine wave will have and the array all the same. I instantiate a new object for the 4922 and yeah, as for the other library I have to pass the chip select pin, the load deck pin you will have to handle yourself. Um, set up, yeah, setting up the array with the sign values, exactly the same. That's all the stuff from the 4822 and now here's the new stuff. 
So yeah, as for the 4822, set the LDAC pin as output and set it to low. Uh, again, we will use that probably in the second video. You have to issue a begin for the 4922 library and then it gets a little bit, not crude, but raw. Um, so the MCP 22 li uh, 49 x library knows basically only one command. There is a, yeah, a shorter analog write which contains only the channel as boolean and only the value you want to output on your bag. And sorry, I can't have that. Um, otherwise the full-fledged analog write statement, yeah, uh, the first boolean is the channel you want to write to, yeah, channel A is false, B is true. Then comes a boolean if you want to use the buffered reference voltage inputs or not, yeah, false or true, it's false because we're using the 3.3 volt rail from the Arduino, so no need to buffer anything. Uh, gain is a little bit uh, an oddity, uh, so true is gain 1 and false would be gain 2. Uh, yeah, is the output active of the deck or not? Boolean again and then our unsigned integer value we want to output. Please note, both these statements and the first one is obviously for channel A and the second one is obviously for channel B, write immediately and directly to the SPI bus, okay? So the loop, nothing new here, I just, yeah, commented out the 4822 stuff and yeah, I go forever through all the steps in my sign value array and I write to both channels the sign value. And yeah, we talked about these statements before. That's it. That's all the code. You've got enough now to get at least five chips out of that 12 chip MCP48XX49XX family up and running. So what will I talk about in the next video? I will definitely talk a little bit more about software, especially uh, <laughs> about driving these decks without a library because you don't really need a library to drive them. They are quite easy to drive and yeah, that will include all 12 chips of the family of course. And in that context we will also talk a little bit about performance, yeah, the transactions per second we can send over the SPI bus or uh, to be more exact uh, how many value changes we per second we can achieve in these stacks with an Arduino. You saw there was an improvement between 60 Hertz sine wave and 70 Hertz sine wave, so about to 16% between the two libraries. Maybe we can do more. I will also talk about hardware and uh, definitely about output filtering. <laughs> I have to admit I omitted some important sections from the data sheets there uh, and maybe I'm not quite sure yet we will build a 12 and a half bit deck or a 24 bit deck and we need to have a look at these MCP49XX types. I mean what's the advantage of not having an internal voltage reference and needing an external voltage reference. Till then, bye!